here what we're doing. Uh, this is the old control board for this oven here. I'm going to use this oven for my parts curing oven. I'll throw that away. And right here I've got the PID controller installed there. Um, I'm in the process of rewiring this. I'm going to be wiring in a pair of these solid state relays, otherwise known as SSRs. Uh, they will go in here. I'm going to use the, the broil element and the lower element, both top and bottom element of this in unison. They're both going to come on at the same time so it'll have an even heating. Um, I'm going to keep the light and it's got a little fan here to circulate air in the upper compartments. I'm going to keep all that stuff intact and what I'll do is I'm actually going to mount my SSRs uh, in here where they'll get that air circulating uh, and what I'll probably do is actually mount them somewhere around here and cut vents in here so they can it can pull through and uh, it'll it'll keep them cool and uh, either way that's what we're doing here and uh, I think it's going to work out real good. Going to the PID controller and the SSR system, it uh, I actually am going to be installing, or oh, wherever the hell it is, a, a nice thermocouple. And all this in conjunction will allow me to keep my oven temperature perfect, exactly where I want it. I can set ramps where it will go up and down as I please. Whereas with just the old regular Kenmore control, uh, you know, you set the temperature, but it's not very accurate. Um, it's going to have a lot of fluctuation. I almost said something I didn't mean to say there. Well, looks like a rat's nest. I'm getting ready to clean that up after I'm done testing. Most of those wires aren't even in use. They're the old ones left over. But uh, over here you've got the two solid-state relays. And if it was a 110 volt system, you'd only need one. But being that it's a 220, uh, it, it it gives you more flexibility to run two solid state relays. Uh, I could have just run both. What right now the way I've got it set up is I've got uh, a top element on one relay and the bottom element on the other. I could have just used one to complete the loop on the 220, and it would have worked just fine. But what this gives me the option to here is if I ever come into a position where I need to have heat on the top or bottom um, because of one reason or another, I can control them individually uh, right there. Um, and my PID will give me the options to do that. So it is working now. And uh, now I'm going to get this thing put back in there and heat it up, see how it does. What I've got here is, uh, oh, did you feel like you were falling? <laughs> what I'm doing here is letting this warm up. <clears throat> I don't know if you see, I've got my original switches there. And if you look down in there, you'll probably see, yeah, the red lights on the solid state relays coming on. That means that this thing is calling for power. The red is supposed to be the readout from, uh, from the thermal couple inside. This is what I've got it set at. It is starting to read. Now, I'm using... At this moment, I'm using the thermocouple that was in the oven already, that's in the back of the oven. I may end up, most likely will, end up having to change it over to the uh, thermocouple that came with this setup. A lot better setup, but it, it'll take a little bit longer to actually install this and do it right. So I just wanted to try to see what it would do with that uh, the oven thermocouple in there. Yeah, it's getting pretty hot, but I don't know that my thermocouple is reading properly. So, we'll set, bring that back to zero. Go to zero, and we'll set. Now, I just set it at one, and so it should, yep, it turned 
everything off there. Definitely got the heat in there. <clears throat> so I need to work on my thermocouple setup and make sure that I've got it tuned for that one. And if, if it ends up not working out right, I'll just uh, bite the bullet and do it the right way. <laughs> like I probably should have to begin with. All right, you see back in there, the solid state relay, the uh, right there, the light is off. And so what I'll do, right here, Sorry if there's a little glare on that. It says 108, and now it's on Fahrenheit. 108, it's reading a little high. Uh, it, it may just, it might not have resolution this low. And I've actually got it set at one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring this up to 190 degrees. So what I can do, set that at zero, come over and I'll set that at we'll go nine and one so it's one nine zero set now if the door's still open here I'll show you notice the light is on it's on on the other one down there as well and what we'll start seeing, I'll end up, I'll get some oven cleaner and clean all that out. But I'm going to close this door here. And as that calls for heat, we're going to see that rise. See if I change the angle here. Y'all can see that number a little better. Change the camera setting here. There we go. Look at that. You can read it now. Like what I said, if you can see there. The top number in red is the actual temperature that it's reading off the thermocouple. The bottom one is the set value, and that is the value that I'm asking for, what I'm calling for. Uh, now, this PID controller has all kinds of alarms and things like that built in. Um, we've got in the background. I don't know, let me see if I can zoom out. Right back there, you see that fan? Well, that cooling fan is attached to all this, and if it senses too much heat above the oven in the electronic area, uh, the PID controller will turn that fan on. And uh, so there's a few overload protection fault things. And what I'm going to do, you see that it is climbing. Once it gets up to temperature, I'm going to show you what it does. It will cycle the... It'll be kind of hard to show you. The, this PID controller uses what they call fuzzy logic. You've probably heard the term a lot. But what it does is it monitors... It doesn't only monitor the temperature at the moment, but it also logs and predicts the rate at which the temperature is climbing or falling. So, you know, to begin with, it's going to climb slowly, and then it's going to start, you know, climbing faster and faster. Uh, well, once it starts getting, I'm going to arbitrarily say, once it gets to 170, let me back up. The normal oven controllers, just what came with this Kimmore, it's not going to turn the elements off until it gets to 190 degrees. Well, that means you're going to ramp way past 190 degrees um, before it levels out. Well, with fuzzy logic, it knows how quickly, it logs how quickly it's raising its temperature, and it predicts at the current you know rate, when's it going to reach 190 degrees, my set value. 
Well, what it will do is so with this fuzzy logic, it will decide, okay, I need to cut power now. I'm at 176 degrees. And if I cut power now, it will, for lack of a better term, coast to 190. Um, and it is able to just very accurately control the temperature. Now, what I'm not sure about, the thing that we don't know about, and I, I'm trying to test right now, it's part of why I just chose 190, uh, is I don't know if with this thermal couple, if it's going to measure so slowly or if it's not going to get a good reading. Um, it, it may not, you know, may not work for us. What's going to tell us is whenever we see it getting up, you know, 170, 180 degrees, and if it will cut, or maybe a little higher, but if it starts cutting power to my relays early and coast on up, well then we'll know that uh, the fuzzy logic is working properly um, and we're in good shape. And so, uh, like I say, just wanted to test it out here and see by doing, it, doing this on this oven first, I'm able to get all the bugs worked out because I've got this other one that I'm going to be installing on my actual annealing and my heat treating kiln. And uh, that's a whole other ball of wax. So uh, I'm going to stop this footage right now and I'm going to come back probably close to 170 degrees. just turned 160 there and it's starting to fluctuate the relays a little. You'll notice a little green light here. That green light indicates that it is putting output, it's, it's output uh, power to energize uh, the solid state relays. And you'll see it, it's fluctuating and it'll probably start doing that with more frequency as it tests and learns and sees you know it's jumping that power off but those coils are down in there they're still red hot uh, let's see if maybe you can see that yeah see there's one I got both of them going so this thing's gonna have to learn um, you know from, from just heating up and remembering what's going on it's gonna learn that hey those coils are still hot. I've still got a lot of residual heat in there that's causing it to continue to ramp. We may actually see it go past the 190 on this time because this is a learning circuit. Um, and so it's one of those things to where you know, you've got, uh, you've got a few things at play here. Uh, this is some pretty intelligent equipment. And uh, I just like I say, it's just really the way to go if you want to have good, precise control. Um, it doesn't make any sense for me for curing Cerakote and things like that to spend thousands of dollars on an oven system that the only thing that one of those ovens does that this one doesn't do right now is that it, they vent. And that's something that I am going to be doing with this oven uh, once I have proofed that everything else on it is working. Is I am going to be uh, putting in a heat exchange ventilation on here. Um, and so then it'll be just fine. Um, you know, I don't have much in this oven. It was used. And uh, you, put a, you know, don't have much in the PID control. And uh, next thing you know, you've got a nice setup. Now you see it fluctuating now, like what I'm talking about. And uh, I'd say that coming up on you know 180, it's just going to click off almost. Because um, I mean, once those those coils are still red hot down there, and they're going to be giving off heat until that goes away. Watch her climb on up here. It's 
So, uh, if any of you guys have had a chance to go over to check out softrep.com, you know, softrep, they've got a uh, Facebook page, they've got a YouTube channel, uh, and chairbornecommandos.com. And Chairborn, they have a uh, YouTube channel and a Facebook page. Uh, I've been talking about both of those for a little while now, trying to get traffic over there. Uh, it's just a phenomenal source. Uh, if you guys, if any of you guys have taken a look and gone to those websites, I'd appreciate it if you'd let me know. Um, and I'll count it if you go over there now and then let me know. <laughs> uh, I just, it's, if you care anything about current events, sulfrep.com is an unbelievable news source. Uh, Chairboard Commandos is just good entertainment with a lot of news. Uh, Self Rep is good entertainment too, uh, but it's, you know, especially the, the website, it is chock full of just real boots on the ground information and news stories. Um, if you are really into it and interested and want to know what's going on right now in the world, join the team room. It's nine bucks a month, but it is worth it. Um, I don't even, I don't watch any TV news anymore. Maybe some local news. Uh, I get all of my news from selfrep.com. Uh, the podcasts are phenomenal. You can go to Stitcher Radio, iTunes, um, you know, Google Play. There, there's, they've got their podcasts in a few different places. But uh, the podcasts are great. Um, the latest one, as of, they had Don Shipley on there. And he is, if you don't know who Don Shipley is, uh, look him up on YouTube. He goes around and what he does is he busts these guys that are phony seals, that act like they, they get jobs or get donations or you know, charity because they say that they are Navy SEALs and they're not stolen valor and uh, I mean they're just these guys are the lowest of the low well Don busts them he's a retired Master Chief um, forgive me and you guys if I'm wrong if it wasn't Master Chief maybe he's or something else um, I don't really know all of the ranks and everything but either way he's a badass and uh, he busts these guys and gives them no quarter. It, it, they are hilarious. They're embarrassing. Uh, I can't tell you how many t of Don's videos where he's got one of these guys on the phone and is calling them out. I've just covered my face up and kind of picked my knees up, pick my feet up, just with embarrassment. Just like, you know, oh, man, God, you, you, I don't feel sorry for the guys. I am embarrassed for them. But... It's, it's a good thing Don's doing. So anyways, he was interviewed there, and uh, he also runs Navy SEAL Experience, which is uh, it's in Virginia, if I'm not mistaken, and it is a uh, training camp that he runs that gets guys ready to go to BUDS, and also, as civilians, you can go and uh, go to this course and test your salts. Uh, it's kind of like a uh, mini BUDS, and uh, it... You, know, you get to shoot the 50 cal, you get to throw a grenade, you get to do mock missions and stuff. And uh, But it's not just like a training camp. This is you are going to test your salts. And uh, so, yeah, check all those out. And uh, really, really interesting stuff. Okay, so now back to the PID controller. You notice now this thing is just flashing. It's going. I mean, it is. It's like a. Uh, well, let's see here. You know what? If I look down here, now that it's flashing, you can just barely see the element in there. Before, it was cherry red. So what this thing's doing is slowly getting that, that heat in that element down. Whereas with your, like I said, with your factory, like in this one, the Kenmore Control, it's on or off, and it's completely 
dependent on points. You set it for 190 degrees, that some gun gets 190 degrees and it turns itself off. And it doesn't come back on until it is below a certain amount. I think that most of them have a, like a, a 5 to 10 degree margin in there that they don't turn back on until after they're 5 or 10 degrees below the set point. So then they, they go down and then they ramp back up. Well, with this fuzzy logic, it is going to keep it right there. So uh, that's what's going on. I'll come back to it in just a minute. There's something if you guys... The fan is kicked on now. It's down in there. Like I said, it does that automatically. Just based off of the temperature that it feels up there. So what I may have to do is back off on that broil. Um, I need to. I'll have to do a little bit of research with this and and, and see. Uh, the broil element may be a little too much. Uh, I may need to turn it off and just have it set to where I can use it if I need it. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Um, but having it on the extended period of time there might be a little hot up there. Uh, like I say, it's just gonna have to work this out. There's no precedent for this being done that I know of. And uh, so, and I'll tell you another thing, guys. If, you know, what I'm showing you here is just kind of the, the, the broad stroke of this. If any of you guys are trying to do some stuff like this, if anybody needs to see my wiring schematics, anybody wants to see what I've done and how I wired it up, um, let me know and I will take the time and do a detailed video of what I've done and how I did it, uh, how to program it. I'll go over all of it. But I don't want to do that <laughs> unless there's a need for it. Um, you know, if, if you guys are just wanting to see it because it's cool, I, I, it may be a while before I get around to it. But if there's somebody out there that needs this, let me know. Send me a message or you know, drop me a comment. And if it's a need type deal, um, let me know. And I will set the time aside within the next couple of days. And I'll go over it all in depth. I'll uh, get you the instruction books out and everything and show you some other options. Uh, you know, but just like I say, contact me and let me know if it's something that you need uh, or if, if, if it would help you or if you got questions and uh, I'll answer them and uh, try and get you set up. So you can see now we're coming up 182. We're still just blinking away. Feeling a good bit of heat out of here, and uh, I'm gonna have to. You know, eventually, I've got a sheet metal panel that'll go over the top of this and cover it back up and all that good mess. But as it is for right now, it's open, and of course, this is stainless steel. I can move this stuff if it starts getting too hot. Um, it's all things I'm just gonna have to check and see. Yeah, that's pretty warm there. It's not hot. I got my hand just on. Let me see if you can see where I'm at. No, you're not seeing what I'm talking about. Right up here. You know, I've got a bunch of crap up here right now, just still left over from where I had the flood. Um, this is stainless steel. It's pretty warm, but it's not hot. And uh, what I don't know is that I'm curious as with this thing having the broil on and all this this time am I above 190 degrees is this just reading improperly I don't know uh, so what I'm gonna need to do is get uh, I guess I'm gonna have to pick up one of the grill remote grill uh, temperature sensors uh, or find a buddy that's got one and stick it in there and test it out and see and uh, I need to before I start cooking parts in here 
I need to verify this and get it calibrated and get it set. Because there's all kinds of calibrations too. If, uh, if it's not reading right or it's reading high or low, uh, I can go in there and offset it a certain number of degrees. Uh, I can change so many parameters in here. Um, and so I just need to double check it, I need to vet it. So. We're at 184. And we're coming up to it. Well, you can still see a little bit of the red in there from the element. There's a good bit of heat there. That's what makes me wonder if it's over 190 degrees. Because it sure does seem hot be only 190. Alright, what you see right here, I've got, uh, I unhooked the thermal couple that I had hooked up to it, which was the, the oven's original one, and I've got the one that was supplied with the PID controller, just, uh, you know, this is a heat insulated cable so I've just got it run through the the door and just got it shut on it it's hanging in about right there what I ran into was as I was telling you earlier it seemed like it was taking an awful long time to heat up to 190 degrees with both elements going and uh, it was it was way up there it was you know 400 500 degrees somewhere like that and so there's calibration where I could calibrate it to that thermal couple but what I've done here is just without changing any calibration, I've hooked this other one up and I'm running it up to 150 degrees. I'm gonna see, it looks like it's really raising up a lot quicker this time. And uh, I'm gonna open it up, test it out and see what I get. Um, I'm pretty sure that this is a true 150 degrees. Yeah, that's 150 degrees. Where this thing was at, it was ludicrous, ludicrous temperature <laughs> for a minute there. Let's see. There we go. We'll be set. Over here, and we'll go up to 190, and we'll see here. And you can see with this light here flashing, that's when it's given power to the coils. That's both coils. And to go to 190 degrees, these coils shouldn't even get red. Uh, they should, you know, just get this little little flash in the power here, and uh, you see how fast it's going now. So, it just wasn't calibrated for that other thermal couple, and uh, that's fine. Uh, I'm better off to use this one anyways. I'm not going to do it tonight because it's getting kind of late, but uh, tomorrow I'll go ahead and finish this up and uh, have it ready to go. There's the back of the PID controller. I've got the oven tilted out here. And right down here, I've got the back plate off here. Normally there's a back plate that covers up this. This is the elements. That's bottom element and the top element. Right here in the middle, 
there was a place for, you know, a, maybe a different model had something there, but it's right in the middle of the oven. And so I took a drill bit and uh, drilled through the back panel. This is one I used. I went all the way down to its largest size. And then I drilled on in just far enough that the thermocouple would fit through, but not the, uh, the screw part of the thermocouple. And so what that's going to allow me to do is take this thermocouple and right here is where it will stop. I've got a nut here. I've got a nut here. And I'll thread this on, sandwiching the wall of the oven in between there. And I'm going to use some of this to seal it. Give me a second here to get it in view. It's black fireplace mortar. So that's going to be used basically as a seal, a gasket around it. Now if you do this, it's very important not to get your sealant on the tip of your thermocouple. So what I'm going to do is get it pushed through from the back and then I'm going to get this nut started to where it's about like that. And then I'm going to take that tip and score it a little bit in behind the nut and then I'll squeeze it down and that'll protect the tip of the thermocouple. And you've got a double wall there like what I was saying. You've got this outside the skin but then there's insulation there and then you've got your inner wall. And I'll take this on the inside and thread it on. Well, now that I got everything pretty much wired up and mainly cleaned up, I mean, it's not, you know, something that's going to win the SEMA show or anything like that, but it'll work. What you've got right over here is, this is the thermocouple wire. I've got it, you can see right here, I've made this harness. It's right there. That thermocouple wire just makes a loop here, the excess slack and it goes down here uh, and in underneath there and goes where I showed you. I've taped it right here just to keep it from you know, getting loose down underneath here where those uh, heating elements are. Right here is your 220 volt or 240 uh, volt AC power in. goes into the harness here. Um, we'll just go ahead and stick with this back here. Um, what you can see Right here, this is the power in. This is the harness here. These wires here are for this cooling fan. And uh, they go into the harness there. You can see these right, wires right here. This is the two wires that come from my solid state relays and they go to the uh, elements to uh, make them work. So you've got all that stuff there in harnesses. Now when you come down here, what you've got there's the two solid state relays and again I, I can get a lot more detailed and more precise with schematics if someone really needs this information I'll show you what I've done the kind of connections that I used right there on those wires that I made basically made these harnesses and the way that it is these connections after you crimp them they're surrounded by shrink wrap already and they've got hot glue inside of them. So when it's, once you heat them up after you've crimped, you have shrink wrap and hot glue seals everything in there and glues them. So they're very, very good, really good connections. And so this is the two sides that are coming from the PID controller right here. You can see right there, that's the uh, thermocouple wire coming in. And over here, what you've got is one side of this, which is actually the black wire that you see on uh, top and bottom, black wire going to each one of these. 
that is coming from power. That's that's coming pretty much straight out of the wall. Um, and what happens is the PID controller will send signal from to these wires here, and it will tell these to open or close. And uh, they're normally open. And uh, if it needs to give power to the elements, it'll close these and complete the circuit here and send power out through the yellow and purple wire to the element. Um, and over here, what we've got right here is a temperature sensor for this chamber in here. If this temperature sensor gets hot enough, it will close and that will send power over here to the cooling fan. This was a temperature sensor for the clean latch. Um, and that was, the, this oven had a, a self-cleaning feature on it. And that was the motor that would lock it. Everyone's seen that little lock switch and everything. Well, it, this cannot be unlocked if this little sensor over here was too high. I'm not using that, I didn't need it. Um, these wires right here are for the uh, manual override for the uh, light inside and then these right here these wires go to the door switch for the light and uh, so it's all pretty self-explanatory pretty simple uh, well I mean let's face it it's not simple it can get very confusing but once you get it done it's not that bad and of course I've made harnesses that go through this area because I don't want to have any chafing on that and uh, I'll fashion up another cover here and uh, go from there. So now it's just time to, to use the thing. I'll show you what the inside, where I put the thermocouple in, what it looks like in a minute. All right, and this is, of course, looking inside of the oven. Just got the bottom rack in right now. Two elements. Over here is the light. And right here is my thermocouple element and it's got the sealant around it and it's ready to be used let's see here if I zoom out here maybe you can see if that gives you any idea of how that thing is supposed to work on there 